On this bit, I'm going to just jump into the demo and just kind of cover just a brief overview of how the product works and kind of a typical path that most people will follow. Now, on this side, and this is obviously on this on the Salesforce side, we're assuming that the product has been set up by um, by um, your, your team or co-actor. It's ready to go. The sync has run and it's populated your data. So it's pulled your data uh, from uh, Salesforce into MailChimp. Now, some customers are new to MailChimp, and so when you get to this spot, you might not see an audience. Uh, and it's very easy to create one. You can create this right from within Salesforce without going into, um, into MailChimp. Uh, so if we just create one here, so we've got one ready. Copy that one there. If you're a fan of The Simpsons, you'll probably know 123 Fake Street. So that allows you to effectively set that guy up. And when I click create audience, it'll go ahead and basically create that within Salesforce and it'll push it over to MailChimp. And a lot of what we do uh, is trying to make the experience as seamless as possible. So you can do things in Salesforce that automatically push over to MailChimp. Now, typically from here, the first thing that most people would like to do is add people to the audience. And so the way that we do that is via our data wizard. So on the left-hand side, we've got the audience somewhere else. This is a new list. Uh, there's no members, no campaigns. We're going to go to this data wizard here. And then we're going to go ahead and launch that wizard. Now, we work with four different types of source. Salesforce list views, reports, Salesforce campaigns. Uh, and if you're feeling fancy, you can even build your own SQL statements. Typically, most people have list views or reports set up already, so it's not uh, particularly difficult. One of the best things about the data wizard is you're not limited like some uh, integration tools to like contacts and links that people up with your applications or objects. You can work with any object. As long as you've got an email field, you can push data from any object. And you can have multiple import wizards. So if you had some information coming from leads or contacts or other objects, again, as long as the email address is there, we can push it all into one uh, MailChimp audience manager. So I'm going to go ahead and work with the lead object. That's probably the most popular uh, one that we see many customers use. And I just set up this MailChimp webinar list view. It's not particularly uh, complicated, but it does highlight a few key points. We have an auto map feature, and that remembers what you've done. So in a previous import, I mapped email to email, first name to first name, and last name to last name. Um, so it's remembered that if you were to add in address fields and map them, it would remember that next time around. So you don't need to do that. In the list view itself, it actually has more fields. Um, and if we click here, we can see that as you can see company, lead status and lead source. Now, as this is a new MailChimp audience, the right hand side is showing us the standard fields that MailChimp provide. And what would be annoying is if you have to stop here and go into MailChimp and add these additional fields, but we actually give a little feature here where you can click add. You can go ahead and effectively map these fields in real time. And it won't just map them, it'll actually create them in MailChimp and it will select the correct data type. So the company field is text, so it's selected text for me. If I was to add a pick list value or a number, um, a multi-select pick list, it would detect that and also send that across. In the case of a pick list or multi pick list, uh, select pick list, we also send across the values that are in there. So it really is kind of taking out a, a few steps. Now, if I click the next, I could just do a one off import, uh, but most people would like to, to schedule this. And so, what we typically suggest is setting up a schedule, and you can set it uh, on any of the predefined uh, sets here so hourly, daily, weekly. But you can even choose a custom one so you can actually select particular days and particular time slots if you want to. I'll just choose hourly. Um, we also support MailChimp groups and tags. Uh, and a bit like the uh, field, if you don't already have the tag, this is in the, audi uh, in the audience, you can create them on the fly. So you can say, this is probably coming from Salesforce and you can hit the save and that will not only um, create the tag, but all the records that are in this import, it will go ahead and tag them against that tag. And if you already had tags, you'd have the ability of selecting one or more of these. Now I'm going to click the save and import and let that run. It will run typically pretty quickly, but just conscious of time, 
So what I'll do is I'll just quickly flick to another screen. It's not, it's, it is starting. Um, I'm going to go back to audiences and I will come back to this to show you loading the data in a second. Now on the audience screen, you can see a couple of key facts. You can easily see what imports are happening. So you saw that we just set up that import together. So there's a one appeared against the MailChimp webinar there. You can also see which audiences have campaigns against them and some headline stats, so open rates and click rates. So if I click into the audience or I click into view, it's going to take me to the same spot. So it's going to take me to the audiences. And if I go to campaigns, I can start to see some information about the campaigns that are sent. Now you can actually, I flicked a bit too quickly there. On the audience summary, we do give some headline stats. We give sort of clicks on where somebody was when they clicked the, uh, the link. So we've got some uh, screens there and graphs, but the campaigns themselves sit within this tab here. And if you click on a campaign, uh, for example, this guy here, you can see additional levels of information about them. So some headline information about the actual campaign, any segments we used. You can even see which email was used all from within Salesforce. A lot of the reporting typically happens in MailChimp itself. So you might want to go into MailChimp and we have a lot of contextual links will get you to that spot. So if I click that view in MailChimp button, what it will do is it will open up MailChimp, it will log me in, it will take me to that specific campaign. And so now I'm in MailChimp. And when that loads in a few seconds, I'll be able to use all of the MailChimp analytics and website views and pretty much everything that MailChimp uh, give you, the optimizer. And you know there are several tools here that you can make use of. Again, it's very easy to jump from Salesforce into MailChimp if you need to. To that point, if the top right-hand corner you have several different spots uh, that will get you straight into a specific area within MailChimp. So for example, if you wanted to get to members, groups, or tags, just by clicking this, I'll open up a window and take you there. I mentioned earlier that we have, um, we use standard Salesforce objects. So we've got custom objects that store our audiences, memberships, email tracking. If you want to, you can effectively create your own Salesforce reports. And we have some preset reports here also that you can build and you simply select the report, click view, it'll open up and I'll put some sample data in there, in this case, sample data. Uh, again, it's all using standard Salesforce reports and you can build dashboards off of them. It's just probably not got much information there. I should quickly flip back to the audience summary. Uh, I hopefully that uh, import has finished. Yeah, so it ran. So you can see it ran two minutes ago. It uh, runs again in 44 minutes. And if you click on this results screen, you can see that it added the five records in there. If there are any problems, any messages, you'd get them there. The kind of messages you might see here, the email address might be duplicated, invalid. Um, there might be some kind of message there that you know you could look at and say, why did that guy not get into the, into the audience? It would give you that information there. Or conversely, if this wasn't a new list and you're updating records, it would give you the update record count. Now, the last point I want to just touch on is the how this looks at the contact or lead level. Uh, so when you install our product, uh, and this is all configurable, so you can change the page layout, but you'll effectively see a, a tab here um, called MailChimp. And again, you can customize this, and it will show you at the contact level which list the person belongs to, uh, their current status. You can also manage people on the fly. So we just did a bulk import. But if you wanted to, you click on manage lists and you could add somebody to one of the other audiences that you have in this particular bank, or indeed take them off. So if you wanted to remove somebody, you could click that. And what it would do is it would unsubscribe that person in real time uh, in MailChimp. Now you will notice on the right hand side, um, it just happened in, in real time in front of us, that we keep an audit of the activity. So this is covering a few different things. That one there just showed us that I clicked unsubscribed. I did it at this time. And if we expand that information out, you can see a bit more information. It was by the admin. I unsubscribed them. I removed them from the development list. So you get a running uh, audit component on the right-hand side. You also can see when people are added. You can see what campaigns they were sent. You can click into that information and get a bit more detail at the level at the, uh, at the campaign level. So there's a lot of information you can see contextual to the contact or lead. You can also filter it if you want to. So you can choose which audiences, what type of information you want to see. 
So that's a very brief and uh, just conscious of time today overview of the product. So we're seeing a few different things here. We're seeing how easy it is to add information from Salesforce into MailChimp. You can see how it is synced back and displayed on the contact on, within our custom objects. We've got contextual links that will get you into different MailChimp spots. You can build reports. Um, some of the areas we didn't cover, you can have this create Salesforce contacts and leads. So we have a feature in field mappings that allows you to either update information. So if you've got your members being updated within MailChimp, we can sync that back to Salesforce contacts and lead records or personal account records. We can also have it create new records. So we can create contacts, leads, and personal accounts um, if you need those as well. Um, we added a record manually um, as well. And you can see we have an option here that if you add a record manually, we can also map those custom fields if it sits outside of the data wizard. So there's a lot of functionality and we've just kind of really touched the, um, the, the basics of it. And uh, if there are any questions at the end or anything you want us to go through in more detail, I'd be happy to answer that. On that point, we have a dedicated support site here, um, which covers quite a lot of detail on the product. You'll notice when you get there, we use these arcades. So we have various videos set up, sort of step you through processes, depending on what you're doing. So the data wizard I was just working on earlier, um, we have literally a step-by-step -step guide on how it works, how it gets there, and you can click through and, and see how it all fits together. And at the bottom, we try to add in some FAQs. So if there's anything that you're looking at a question on, we've got some FAQs sitting there. We're adding to that bank at the moment. And if all else fails, you can obviously get in, in touch with Paul's team or us via the contact tab, should you have any kind of specific questions about the product or, or, or trying it. So that's a demo. Hopefully that um, kind of covers the main use case. I've, I've gone through it quite quickly because I just want to make sure we've got enough time for the presentation today. I'm just going to flip back to the presentation itself. just go back over the things. So I've done this kind of already, but as we mentioned before, there's an automated sync. So every hour information we pulled from MailChimp back into, into Salesforce, we do that to be respectful. Uh, I guess a key point there, we being an integration, we make sure that we are very respectful of Salesforce governor limits and limits that trip up a lot of integrations. So the product is very well built to deal with bulk operations. You can push data from Salesforce to MailChimp to allow segmentation, to send focused emails. We've seen that you can see those results and that activity straight on the contact or lead objects rather via audience membership. You can see audit information, you can see email tracking all on the screen. These are all lightning components. You can reposition them if you have a complicated page layout or you prefer to change it. We use standard Salesforce permissions. So you can hide things away or expose things to users. So it's, it's pretty, pretty malleable to 